Okay, great. Uh, all right. Um, welcome everyone for another series um, in the, um, you know, I, I don't know what to name this yet. So call it as emergency series. But the idea is to talk to people who have lived uh, during the, uh, the, the turbulent times of the emergency back in 1975 and try and understand, you know, what life was about that time, how it had, uh, you know, impacted them in any way. Uh, and so on and so forth. So today uh, we are joined with uh, Mr. HRK. Um, and I'll first, uh, you know, begin by asking him to introduce himself. You know, how would he like to describe himself? Uh, so HRK, thank you very much for joining us. And, uh, you know, so I'll start off with how do you, uh, you know, want to introduce yourself? Uh, well, um, um, HRK is an acronym of my own name. Anumanta Reddy Kotidela. I am I am from Andhra Pradesh. That's 12 Andhra Pradesh and uh, present on Andhra Pradesh too. I'm from Karnul district. Uh, was born uh, in a small remote village called Gani. Gani, G-A-N-I, Gani, uh, in Karnul district, Nanjal Taluk, um, in uh, 1951. So I'm almost uh, nearing the Saptati. Uh, well, um, okay, about my relationship with uh, emergency, we'll know a bit uh, interesting things in it. Yeah, uh, we'll probably uh, talk about uh, that. Okay, then uh, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, I will answer them when yes. uh, I, I, I receive the questions. Yes, yes, my. absolutely. So, uh, and for, for, mm, first of all, uh, Suresh, thank you for this thank you. No, no, it's a pleasure is all mine. Because I've always been curious. I've uh, always wanting to know what the situation was like and you know how at a personal level at an individual level whether these things even affect ordinary people like us uh, who may or may not be political in nature so pleasure is all mine um so professionally how would you describe yourself your work what were you um, you know uh, professionally how were you engaged and what kind of work you were doing do you mean now or? Uh, yeah, yeah. In in general, as a profession, what how what were you? Okay, basically, I'm a journalist. Okay. Um, uh, not at the time of uh, emergency. I became a journalist later after the emergency. Mm. Uh, well, after emergency, actually. Um, okay, I, I I did some teaching also in a college, small, it's very small stint. Mm -hmm. But basically, I was a journalist. I have been a journalist. Okay. Now, at the moment, I'm, a, uh, I'm not doing anything except reading and writing. Okay. And when you say writing, what, what do you write about? Uh, for instance, I'll show this book to you. This is my recent book. You may see okay. it. Rebel. Uh, Rebel. It's a novel. I, okay. write, I write short stories. I write novels. I write... Uh, literary criticism and uh, I have now with the political economy also mm. at certain times um, and uh, ideologically or uh, by inclination I am a Marxist mm. so I look at things uh, as a Marxist most uh, are within quote unquote Marxist because uh, uh, Marxism cannot be defined the Marxist cannot be defined there are so many Marxist, so many Marxisms. Hmm. So, so in my own way, I'm a Marxist. What is your definition of Marxism? Um, commitment to the working people hmm. and their and their welfare. Not only welfare at the moment, but the but their uh, workers' uh, state. I I want a worker state on this uh, earth, planet Earth. The only that would. Uh, solve all problems of the earth itself. Not only humankind, but at the earth itself. Environment, so everything. That's a, that's a short and sweet definition. It's a very uncomplicated version of Marxism, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Um, all right, great. So, but how were you influenced? Like what, what influenced you along these, uh, uh, along this thought process? But, but what is the last thing? Well, how were you influenced? Like, why did you chose to follow this philosophy of Marxism? Uh, were there any early influences or it gradually grew upon you? 
it gradually grew up on me uh, I, i didn't uh, i was not picked up by anybody i picked up sure. everything yeah I, i wanted to because i was not a trade union i wasn't in a trade union not even in a students movement when i was actually studying mm. uh, in uh, vijayawada visakhapatnam uh, so i searched for it and uh, found it but the problem questions were grad uh, in questions in me cannot be um thought causes right mm. uh, the, the times i lived in were the cause of the my questions in me and in finding answers to those questions i went into marxism and uh, marxist leninist party actually mm. okay mm. all right so uh, we'll probably you know go back and forth now uh, with in the context of emergency before and after so mm -hmm. uh, when the emergency was declared uh, 21st june 1975 Yes. Uh do you recall what at that point in time where you were what were you doing what stage in your <laughs> life you were at? It <laughs> very interesting. I I cannot but recall it too too much not to recall. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah uh, just a uh, uh, 10 days or uh, uh, around 15 days before that uh Jaya and I got married. Oh, no, wonderful. Uh, in the town hall of Karnool um in the so called uh, mike belly means mm. uh, without the purohit or anything so and uh, after 20 days it actually after 15 days the emergency was declared mm. if, if i believe and uh, if i uh, calculate Recall. correctly but after 20 days i was arrested oh wow from my uh, what do you call athagari want <laughs> mother in law eh yeah? father mother in -law. mother in law's house so i was taken away to mushirabad district jail and spent all my all the days of emergency in mushirabad district jail away from my home and my wife and uh, and all that wow so so for 21 months because that's how long the emergency was so you yes, were arrested yes. for the entire duration yes yes 21 months Wow. So, what did you do to to, <laughs> to have the authorities arrest you right after uh, the emergency was declared? And you know, what were you involved in? What kind of activities were you doing? Okay, I was an uh, organizer of CPI ML, Marxist Leninist Party, okay, which, which is popularly called uh, Naxalite Party. Hmm. So, I was a Naxalite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. A member of uh, RWA, Revolution Writers Association. Okay. Uh, at the actual moment of my arrest, I was uh, organizing students in Karnataka district under the banner of PDSU, Progressive mm -hmm. Democratic Students Union. Okay. Which was uh, formed after the uh, after the after the inspiration of in, inspired by George Reddy, who was killed by the. Uh, communalist right in was in osman university and uh, his uh, followers his friends actually prasad and all prabhakar Pr prasad pradi all these people they mm. formed an organization called pdsu only after death of uh, george mm -hmm. all these events uh, influenced me when i was though i was uh, far away from osman university i was studying in andhra university visakhapatnam mm -hmm. but i was influenced by these things mm. and that's it. and so at the time of organizing these students because emergency was not declared right uh, mm -hmm. but why were you organizing the students like what were your uh, uh, the demands of whatever you trying to organize or were there is like protests uh, happening within your university or what what kind of activities was your organization involved in So my work in the pdsu in kandur district was not as a student leader but as a party worker okay uh, deputed by the party i i was just a, just left the university isn't it right so so uh, I, i went into the to uh, i was given the work uh, amongst students in kandur district uh, i was organizing them 
Uh, at that time, PDSU took up a uh, statehood program against uh, price rise. Mm. Uh, I still remember the date, February 25th. I was so, so instant, uh, I cherished in my brain. Uh, so this was 1975? 1975. Okay. Mm. Okay, so you, you were organizing, so you were a member of CPIML and you were organizing this uh, student's uh, sort of campaign against the price rise. Uh, again, the price rise and uh, into PDS against all in this, okay. in this society. Okay, okay. And how big was your organization? Because for, for the state to clamp down on your activities and immediately arrest, Mm -hmm. You guys were probably, you know, very prominent, I would imagine. Actually, I, I don't think I was prominent. Mm. Um, but this organization was prominent. I see. In, in Karnul, this, the CPML was led by Center of Polarity at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, he later also, I, I worked only in that uh, organization. Mm. Uh, when I was organizing uh, students, the entire Karnul Trade unions, all the trade unions in the Karnal were under the banner of uh, CPML uh, CP because uh, his uh, another uh, great comrade by name Neelam Ramachandraya was the reason for this um, CPML influence in Karnal. Hmm. Neelam Ramachandraya, you may have heard NR. We all, we all call him NR. Mm. With, a, with a, uh, dearly. Mm. So, so entire uh, trade unions, all the trade unions were uh, under the leadership of the CPIML at the time. PDS was just growing. I was uh, only two or three people, students, because C, C, SFI was uh, uh, prominent in Karnal at the time. Mm. Uh, so, I was, that's it. SFI is a student federation. Of CPI M. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yes, yeah, I S F is uh, CPI. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and what what made you join uh, CPIML in the first place? Why did you join? And you you yes. said you you said you were influenced by uh, George Reddy and uh, you know the likes of him. Is that, was that one reason why you joined CPIML or this was before that? Mm -hmm. Uh, no, no, after, after that. Okay. Mm. After George's death. Mm. But those were the influences, but the external influences, things cannot influence you into doing those things, right? Right, right, right. So uh, I must be, uh, there must have been something in me right. uh, that provoked me into going, going to it. Sure. Uh, that, what, what was that? I cannot, uh, <laughs> it's not easy. Right, right. Actually, this novel I showed you, Rebel. Yeah. I, I tried to analyze that. Oh, okay. Mm. So that's your own personal journey, is it? Almost personal. Okay. Okay. So at the, at if the there was time, anything like personal journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, at the time of, um, you know, when you got arrested, so I'm assuming you got arrested on June 21st? Uh, after... Uh, a week, I believe. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, when uh, actually the emergency was uh, declared, me, I, uh, Comrade Ra Na Ramaswamy, Comrade Veera Veeranna of uh, Adoni, we were uh, uh, going around the villages. Uh, mm -hmm. I was meeting uh, amongst the, uh, the uh, meeting people in the villages and all that. Mm -hmm. By the time I came home. Uh, Police uh, actually went to my village, Gani, for me. Oh. I, I was told about it, and uh, people asked, my uh, family asked me to go underground. I didn't like it because I was just married. I was unable to go, go away from Jaya. Hmm. <laughs> so uh, that's it. Hmm. I, I, moreover, I, I don't think I was mature enough to understand what it is, what does it, what it means by underground and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Just after, just after May, I joined the party. I was just one hour, within one year, the emergency came and mm. that's it. And you got arrested. I was arrested. 
but uh, were you uh, ever anticipating this to happen like did you ever think that uh, they would arrest you uh, how can i not uh, expect it uh, actually we were expecting uh, to be killed any time oh okay uh, arresting is the secondary thing hmm. even my, my, my family was very happy that i was arrested oh wow uh, yeah because if i were there outside i would have to get encountered right mm -hmm. so that was so, for your own safety so I, I, at least if he's alive it's okay <laughs> right right yeah. and but why did you think that you guys were uh, would be arrested because all you are doing is uh, organizing the students organizing the people against the injustices and all that was yeah. the state was the state uh, so in control of these things back in the day that uh, you feared that you will be arrested uh, my fear for arrest because uh, was because of my activities only right? mm -hmm. not not of the states but uh, uh, emergency was declared not because of our activity right right in, yeah in india itself was in crisis right right in, indian capitalism was in crisis uh, indira gandhi um, just to save her skin uh, all these are uh, smaller episodes Mm hmm. How can there be a total revolution by JP? How can there be a Vietnamese struggle against America? How can there be a Chinese cultural revolution almost at the same time? Mm. How can there be Sorbonne University, Berkeley, everywhere, everywhere things were burning? Mm. So these, those were times. Of, those were burning decades. Mm. So you. It was natural for us uh, to take up to um, rebellion. Mm. So you always feared that you would be arrested, but you didn't think it would be uh, because of the emergency situation. You were even before the emergency had happened. You were probably thinking about uh, you know the, the the arrest by the state itself. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. No, my, my, my senior comrades were uh, used to be in underground. Mm. Nobody, nobody, even before emergency. Mm. Comrade Virana, CP was uh, sought after. He was uh, his uh, the price was there on his heads, uh, on the heads of uh, CP, NR, and all those people. Mm. So this was also the time when the Naxal movement was also at its peak, right? Uh, Naxal movement was not at its peak. Uh, it was uh, uh, growing. It was growing. But not only Naxal movement. The emergency was not because of Naxal movement. I, uh, yeah, yeah. That's my reading. Right. The emergency was because of total revolution called uh, led by J. J. Prakash. JP, yeah. It was the real threat hmm. to the, uh, the Indira Congress or the system of the day. Hmm. Okay, so you got arrested and uh, did you get a chance, you remembered uh, talking to your family uh, before you got arrested or you had no uh, opportunity to do that? You were just taken away and you had no uh, you know, time with your family because you also were just married uh, 20 days ago. Yeah, yeah. I, I was arrested while I was uh, having my breakfast. Oh, okay. Oh, Jaya was uh, um, besides me. Uh, we were talking and eating. Then the police came inside and asked me, I am, told me that I am under arrest. I asked me to finish my breakfast. Mm. I finished my breakfast and my pan shirt were there. I, I wore them and went away with them. Mm. And at that point, did you know why you were being arrested or... Uh... Did you think it was because of the emergency or because of the activities you're doing in the state or you had no idea? Because of the emergency. Okay. It was because of the emergency. Okay. Okay. Uh, almost all uh, uh, RSS people, CPML, uh, um, some socialists also, for instance, Pingali Dasaratram was arrested. Mm. Um, all, all those, almost all people who were opposed to Indira Gandhi. Mm. Uh, were arrested. Even Kuldeep Nair, the journalist, was arrested. Mm. Okay. Mm. And when you were arrested, uh, 
and taken to the you said Mushirabad jail, right? Yeah, yeah. So what, what... There, there is no Mushirabad district jail now right. in, in Hyderabad. Right. There is a Gandhi Medical College there. Mm. <laughs> it, it is demolished and uh, a hospital is built. Ah, okay, okay. Janjalguda district jail is being used for that purpose. Right, right, right. Yeah, that jail still exists. That jail, that, that, jail, that jail still exists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So w- was this the first time you were arrested? Hey, it was first. Mm. And yes, did you did you think that at that time you will be arrested for like 21 uh, months? Uh, we didn't know that it will be 21, 21 months. We thought it would be longer. Oh, okay. Okay, Indira Gandhi uh, did it for a purpose. With right. a purpose. Uh, unless the purpose is served, how can she be lifted? Oh, okay. Uh, it was, uh, India was fortunate that uh, she realized she cannot go on like that. Mm. The emergency was revoked mm-hmm. after 21 months. Mm. So what was the situation in the jail? Like, how was the, uh, because along with you, I'm sure several other comrades of yours several, were also arrested. So, yeah, several others were there. Almost 200 or some, within the Musrabad district jail, we were around 200 or 250. Um, uh, false arts. Even some uh, factions were there. Hmm. Tala Ram Krishna Red was there, I believe. Um, what is his name? Uh, Vijaywada Kapu leader. Rangaviti uh, Ranga. Oh, okay. Rangaviti Ranga. Ranga. Rangaviti Ranga was there in jail. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, the, that's the thing. Um, so, but the reason uh, was not our activities. Hmm. Reason was uh, the crisis, the overall crisis in India. Right. Um, right. That's it. And what was the treatment like? Did the police, uh, you know, ill treat you? Were there, uh, you know, too much uh, torture, or how was the no, treatment in the jail? Not at all. Okay. However, we it was like uh, <laughs> Okay. Because six rupees per, uh, per day were, were given. Uh-huh. Other, uh, six rupees at that time per day was too much. Oh, wow. Uh, well, we used to have uh, matanar chicken every twice a week. Wow. Uh, and we were given uh, some so-called PC, packet money. Uh-huh. And uh, we could uh, buy our cigarettes and all that. And uh, we were not given any work or something like that. We, we were called B-class detainers. B-class detainers? B-class detainers. Not C-class, but B-class. Oh, wow. I didn't know such classes existed. Yeah, the political detainers. We were just political detainers. Okay. They, 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 could, they didn't uh, unless any crime or something like that. Okay. For, for, for instance, the allegation against me was I was hindering the essential commodities uh, mobility. Oh, I see. Uh, it was called MISA. What, what was it called? MISA. M I S A. Oh. Okay. M I S A. MISA. Okay. Ma- okay. Maintenance of Internal Security Act. Oh. Okay. 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 Uh, so oh, and and so, what were you guys? Uh, you know, how would you guys spend time in the jail then, if you had nothing else to do? Were you all in one cell, or you were in like several different cells? There, there used to be barracks. Oh, okay. Uh, 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 the daytime, uh, even three hundred people, we used to uh, be together. Okay. Uh, in the open. Hmm. In, in the open, within the walls. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, in the uh, nights, we were asked to go to the barracks. Uh, around uh, um, 20 or 30 persons a barrack. Mm-hmm. We used to have our own carts, mm. even mosquito nets, mm. beds, everything. Uh, so we, uh, we can read, we can play cards, or we can play uh, the, what, what's the badminton, mm. volleyball. I, I never played anything before that. But I, after, after going to jail, I learned how to play volleyball and badminton. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know how to play. I, I didn't know that volleyball has to be pushed with the fingers. 
so you learned quite a bit uh, inside the jail also. Yes. Different, I, I, or different side of yourself. Yes. The only thing is I was away from uh, the family. Family, especially uh, my wife. Right. And right. moreover, uh, um, we didn't know when I was arrested, but uh, they are already conceived. And Mamata was in her, uh, the first cells of Mamata were in her oh, tummy. Wow. <laughs> so when did you when did you learn about that? Only when uh, after going to uh, after two or three months uh, after arrest, then I, I was told that she is pregnant. Uh -huh. uh, so um, when just before uh, her delivery, she came to interview me. Mm. Mulakhat. We used to call it Mulakat. Yeah. Mm, and uh, I was it, it really uh, just very, uh, uh, was a sad, very thing, sad thing. Yeah. Because, um, to, to see her, to the belly, I want to touch her, I could not. Yeah. And, uh, and all that. Mm, but I did touch her. Mm. I still remember how I touched her feet, oh. which were towards me where when she was sitting. Mm -hmm. And I was seeing how oh, we that the child, our child in our tent. That uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, our child is there. Then, then she came on after also after the delivery also. Ah, okay, okay. Mm. So I mean, I, did you did you ever try to appeal your, your case? I did. That? Okay. I didn't appeal. To, there is no case. Right. To, to appeal. Right. But uh, there was a, a provision called parole. Mm -hmm. Applied for, I applied for parole. Mm -hmm. um, once for uh, in, um, showing the cause of my wife's pregnancy. Second, I uh, showing the cause of uh, my child's birth, but I was not given. Oh, okay. I was not given any parole. Mm -hmm. All the 21, 21 months. Uh, I had to. That was it's very, I can say that it is we were big class detainees and all that. We were we had good food um, and cigarettes too, because uh, I learned uh, smoking only after going into jail. Mm. Because I had money. Second thing, I needed it. Right. Yeah. To to be to kill my loneliness. Right. That's uh, so. Uh, it was uh, very what do you call. Very melancholy thing, very sad thing. I cannot because uh, we used to hear news like that Prasad was uh, encountered, Yanar was encountered. The, the people who are near and dear to us. Jampal mm -hmm. said Prasad was encountered during emergency. Mm -hmm. do you, do you have you ever heard of this thing? No, no, I've never. He, he was the backbone of the Osmani University. Progressive Democratic Students Union, which was a great wave at the time. Mm. There was only one organization which, is, uh, which was TDSU in the name of George. He was George's follower. Prasad, Jambal Chandra Prasad was the follower of George. Mm -hmm. He was an engineering student. I think he was in fourth year when he was yeah, encountered. Mm. Some of the Tasila, at that time, Tasila was good position, but still. Right. Mm. right. So, yeah, when uh, so Jaya came to meet you, your wife uh, came to meet you uh, during her pregnancy, mm -hmm. and that was uh, what, six, seven months of her pregnancy? Was that the time when she came around yeah, to meet you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and when you learned about it, how did you come to know about it? How were you informed about it? it was, uh, I was told by, by letter. We, we were allowed letters. Okay. Those censored. Censored right. letters. I see. Okay. The, uh, somebody will read and give it to me. Oh, they wouldn't give you the actual letter? They, they will give, but after reading. Oh, okay. Okay. They work Got well it. and read. Got it. Got it. Okay. But that must have been really, really tough time, like, like you said. When you realize that uh, you know she was pregnant and you were not there to help her out, uh, yes. so and, and what about your parents? Did they come meet you while you were? No, they didn't come because it's a question of money. 
Right. They didn't have money. Mm. I was the eldest. I was mm. the main sucker to the family. I was supposed to be the sucker to the family. I didn't uh, perform the duty. I gave myself like that. Um, so they were they thought that they were angry with me for my activities. They were angry with me for uh, marrying without dowry and all that. And uh, um, going into the party, which was nothing but uh, Shivalayam. <laughs> <laughs> so they were angry, but not uh, antagonistic. Mm. But they did come. They did come because they couldn't come. Right, right. They were poor. Right. And, and, uh, and yeah, so, sorry, go ahead. Ah, well, uh, coming to and going back to Ghani village, hmm. it was too much for them financially. Right, right. Even for Jayai, it would have, it would have been. It, it must have been. Yeah. Mm, somehow they made it. Hmm. And uh, the people who you spent time with in the jail for that uh, 21 months, Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I'm sure some of you, some of them you already knew before you uh, were arrested. Some of them I knew. Mm -hmm. Only some of them. Mm -hmm. So by the time your 21 uh, months period ended, you probably would have become good friends with them. Yeah, <laughs> I made some real good friends. Mm -hmm. the, uh, Kashi Pati, my Adhati Kashi Pati, and Varvar Rao. Even uh, Chara was there. Mm. Um, I think TMS, the Pernan Masun Rao. I mm. think so. I, I, I don't remember. And uh, Perspectives RK now in Hyderabad is running the administration called Perspectives. Separately. Mm -hmm. MV, MV Ramanarati from Pudatur. Mm. Bhuman from Kadapa district. Mm. Bhuman Subrona. Mm. Brother of uh, Bhuman Karnakar, Vyasar's uh, was ah, okay. minister, minister uh, Vyasar's brother. Mm. And, uh, uh, and Indra Radhi was there. <laughs> Indra Radhi was there. Was a, he came into jail as a PD student. Oh, I see. Indra Radhi, that's right. Um, uh, Telangana. I think it was the education minister under NTR's government, in mm -hmm. NTR's government. He was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. when, the, when the news finally broke to you that, uh, you know, the emergency was uh, revoked and uh, you were all, you know, uh, what, did that happen immediately that the emergency was revoked and you were all let go? Yeah, automatically. They were, we were given the train pass to travel. <laughs> so I, I, I wrote in the novel, I traveled bucket ticket in train. Bucket ticket means with the ticket. Yeah. And the police uh, helped me to go bucket ticket. Oh. Because they, they let me. They were their escort. Right, right. And while, while going home, uh, they, they were, there was no escort, but I was given a pass, mm. jail pass. So what, what were you thinking when you were on the train? You were released after 21 months. You had a newborn waiting for you. Uh, that's and, the thing. Uh, that was the thing I was thinking. Hmm. <laughs> that newborn thing. It was really a bliss. Great. Right. Then I, I uh, at last I went to Manlem, that village, Jayas village. Hmm. And a small one-year-old Mamta, first time I've seen her. She crawled to me, to, near me, and um, looked into my eyes. I thought, wow, <laughs> I'm so blessed with it. So how long uh, did, you, did you, you know, uh, enjoy those moments before you stepped out into the real world like, and again, uh, you know, went back to whatever you, you were doing? Almost, because the, the, the situation was so democratic at the, by the time I came home. Mm. Janta Party was uh, almost going to win. Mm. Uh, elections came, right? Um, after after the revocation of emergency, Janta Party came to power. Right. 
also the entire country was uh, there was a uh, jubilation yeah democratic de- democratic jubilation yeah yeah so we were all uh, very hopeful and actually our aggregation grew four times or five times oh wow in a uh, six months because uh, of that uh, democratic uh, situation in the country oh uh, okay okay mm, satnayan singh and the cp jain hands satnayan singh was the leader from the north and cp was sandapalaradi was from the south the jain hands and mm. our party became very big and immediately almost immediately i was given the charge of editing our party organ called vimochana mm-hmm. jaya and i both of them went to uh, work for uh, the party mm. as uh, in the and we were asked to man the city office in hyderabad while planning the magazine oh we were bar- another 6 uh, 7 uh, years uh, real um festival mm. revolutions so, are uh, revolutions are festivals of the history says sorbani right. students right that's why in, in the yeah, yeah so you, you you saw the period of that revolution and you saw the success of the you know post revolution so you lived through that times and all of that happened within such a short span right that that two three years of uh, yeah, yeah. the turmoil uh, so that would have been really fantastic achievement from a democratic uh, standpoint yeah uh, so in terms of how the the 21 months of your arrest or the whole emergency how did that shape your thought process or the way forward mm, i don't think it made any change mm. i was thinking the, the same as i was uh, before the arrest before the arrest uh, actually I, i i i told the same when i was there was a welcoming party in karnool mm. um uh, the janata party people uh, arranged a small uh, meeting uh, from uh, immediately after coming uh, that is from our uh, train itself mm. so uh, i told them uh, okay it's good it's good that i come out now i can meet my wife and child and uh, also we can work for the ideals which i have been working before i left but i also know that the emergency is not over the people who came to power in delhi uh, let, let me see if they are better i don't think they are better mm. because uh, our uh, um, ndvr is uh, workers state will they allow the workers state to come they won't mm. so our our fight goes on that's what i said that's what i did mm. and uh, as part of that when... but this time this time uh, jaya was uh, was there even before emergency uh, with me and with the party mm. but uh, uh, her activity was uh, slightly less now we were become we have become equal Partners, partners in crime partners in activity yes <laughs> so, so when the after the emergency was lifted and you guys were you know sort of in that moment of euphoria and everything mm-hmm. did it ever occur to you that you should also contest elections and really represent uh, the worker state in in the policy making and all that after emergency our party decided to participate in elections but only for campaigning oh okay canvassing for revolutionary politics not for not with the aim that we will achieve power through parliament or assembly so parliamentary politics is definitely wrong we asked that we felt it's only the arm struggle of the people that can achieve the real victory for the people who believed in it um but even now for as a for canvassing or for uh, power it never occurred to me to participate in elections mm. not that is right i don't think it's right communists must participate in elections seriously but they must use the forums of parliamentary forums also uh, seriously not for uh, canvassing for revolution mm. 
not for uh, revolutionary propaganda. They must work for it. They must uh, um, seriously discuss with people. That's a different thing, of course. Mm -hmm. But I didn't. Uh, it never occurred to me. Mm -hmm. But we were very happy that Chapala Yerraya was elected as CPML candidate in Yelandu. Mm -hmm. See, Chapala Yerraya was the first uh, person to get elected from CPIML. As, as a MLA or? Uh... MLA, MLA, MLA. Okay. So that's people's victory. If Japan arrived, was nothing. It was uh, even, uh, he didn't know that he should not uh, have the with Congress. So he went into Congress. Mm. Not that he's wrong. Not that he's hypocrite or something like that. He's too poor, too ignorant. Mm. That's it. After that, uh, another uh, person came uh, after Chapel area, what's his name? I don't remember. He stood steadfast with the party all the time. Mm. But first uh, person to be elected from CPML was Chapel area. And uh, at that night, I still remember, I uh, and our comrades went to a film uh, entitled Hum Kisi Se Kam Nahi. <laughs> We selected it for the title of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a very apt movie to watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and and then um, how did the, how did the following years uh, define you your work? You said you started writing for the uh, the magazine. Editing. Editing, mm. writing also, but editing is. Uh, I was the uh, working editor of the magazine. Mm -hmm. And were you also involved in the public life, like yeah. uh, organizing and you know all of those things? Yes, yes. I used to be um, mainly in a writers association, revolution writers association, RWA, mm. and helping other organizations as a speaker whenever they wanted me. To go, I will go. I used to go and speak in public meetings mm. wherever in the state. Mm. And uh, what, what were some of the activities you did, like the writings you did as part of RWA? Mm -hmm. what, what were the writings like? What do you what would you write mostly about in those uh, in the RWA? Now, uh, telling the people the inevitability of the revolution mm. <laughs> to, to put it in the uh, single sentence mm. so we used to talk about people's problems and how the problems cannot be solved without revolution and you also said revolution you believed in the arm struggle yes so uh, that 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 always is will put you in the line of fire with the government yes or with the authorities yes right and that would always, uh, you know, be something held against you, and you were always going to be arrested again if yeah. that's the line of thought you carried. Yes. Looking back, did you think that your thought process then was correct, or you changed course? Were there any sort of? Uh, did you come to terms with uh, your approach back then? Basically, it was right. Mm. It is only only by, by revolution the, uh, workers can come to power. Mm. I still I, I still think so, but uh, the way uh, they took to the extremes, mm. no, I don't think it, uh, it, it, it I don't think it paid, or I don't think it will pay. The Telugu la vote patience. Uh, revolutionaries uh, lack an element called patience. Revolutionary impatience, uh, it's not good. Mm. It's detrimental to the people. Mm. And so how long were you actively part of these groups, RWA and CPIML? How long was, was your journey with them? Up, up to 1985, I believe. 85. 85. Okay, so that's like a good, good eight years after the emergency. Ah, good eight years. Eighty-five, eight, eighty-five years. Mm. 
and and what happened next after that how what why did you change course or why did you leave everything behind um two things um i came to the understanding i a, a decision a conclusion that we are not going to win that's one thing mm. second thing our party split vertically mm uh, after, so we will the split itself uh, was unwarranted then what if i don't know the answer why how can i stay there mm why why did the party split i must know if if i cannot answer that uh, basic question i have no right to stay there and uh, propagate the same idea i what if i die or not is is that's not the question Mm. If I am encountered, it's not a, that's not the question. But I am provoking and inspiring people to get encountered, mm. attracting uh, young people into the fold where they have no nothing but get killed. Uh, so I must be responsible. Mm. With that responsibility to myself, I thought I cannot continue there. I told the same. With, with the party uh, that is the conclusion i have come mm. but it is not necessary that you should come should have come to the same conclusion it's obvious that you haven't come to the same conclusion so i will go out i am not doing any splitting thing again i'm just going to go i have as individuals we are going out they and i we have we, have, we discussed it. only two people discussed we are mm. going out mm. we will live our own lives and be friends with you mm. that is the thing we have told and left it and how did you uh, go on with the rest of your life since then immediately then it was really difficult because i took only 1000 rupees per from the party i told the party immediately for my food and all that i need some money i take i'm taking 1000 rupees but 1000 rupees cannot uh, last for uh, full month at that time mm. um then i went to my friends like uh, ck and rn reddy hyderabad book trust mm-hmm. i told him i need i need to earn some money mm. uh, i i want to translate then he asked me to translate koshambi pan habib and uh, i did some translations for one month and then uh, i went to then at the same time just before um my resignation or something like that um udayam was started mm-hmm. i went to abk prasad and asked um, i want to work as a journalist he said oh you are not straight i cannot take you. <laughs> okay then uh, patanjali garu and devi amar they help represented me there uh, as kadle let's take him So they took me as a subway training. That's how I started. Six mm. hundred rupees per month. Mm. My my, my uh, earning life started with that. Got it. Mm. So um, now now as we I understand you know some part of your life that you spent during that emergency period and all of that. the situation that is currently in india mm-hmm. do you see any parallels between the two or you think this is a normal course that has been happening you know and you don't see anything that is uh, in close comparison with what what transpired uh, during the emergency um comparing present situation with the emergency do uh, situation of the times of emergency is definitely wrong mm because it will lead us to uh, unnecessary complications and unnecessary ideas mm. today capitalism is not that crisis ridden as it was in 60s mm. 60s to 70s uh, but there was no hope for the young people there was no hope for the small uh, traders etc today we have the hope. Uh, in andhra pradesh uh, i don't know uh, how far you agree with me 
But uh, the so-called uh, welfare measures taken by the Andhra Pradesh government today, I have been following it because it's my state. Um, they are giving some hope, I believe. True. They are giving some hope. Hmm. So that hope, when there is hope, you, know, you were uh, wanting to make revolution is, wa is a wanton uh, wish. It's not a correct uh, thing. Hmm. Revolution for revolution's sake. As if you are bloodthirsty. Hmm. Revolutions are blood bloodthirsty people. They make revolution because it is, in a, it is there is no other way around. Hmm. It's the self-defense mechanism of people. That is why we used to call it resistance struggle. We resist the injustice. In the, in the way of, in, in this uh, process of resisting the injustice, we will achieve justice. Hmm. Just uh, say the parat and post on the parat, arm struggle for arm struggle sake is uh, nothing but uh, uh, erstwhile uh, we are a puja. You want to be a hero, right? Hmm. You want to be a viru. So there must be vira uh, charya. You want to be a hero. So it's some heroic deed must be there. You must do it. Hmm. Whatever it is. How can you whatever it is? Your aim must be. Uh, to see that the um, working people rule. Mm. That must be the aim. So mm. that uh, the, if that aim is uh, uh, compatible with what you do today, then you must stop in your tracks and think back. Mm. The, the, the reason why I asked that question is uh, because now if you see um, the, the way media is, is curbed, the way judiciary is completely uh, in, um, in a cahoots with the government, any major decision that you see in the last you know, few years. Uh, so there is a systematic way of uh, sort of undermining the democratic systems, uh, you know, be it any of these independent auditing, for example, the CAGs and the, you know, the other institutions, the election commission, the CBIs, all of them, you can see that there is a systemic erosion of their uh, independent and the, uh, their uh, authorities. Uh, this, this is something that happened during the emergency also, but in emergency, it was more obvious. It was clearly saying, okay, you don't do this, you don't do that. Now it is happening as part of a systemic erosion. So not that obvious, but it is happening along those lines. So, uh, but the point that you made earlier, I think now we have the hope, but back in the emergency, all the hope was crushed or even before that. Uh, so how do we uh, sort of keep our... <laughs> Uh, belief in the democratic process when all of these things are going? What lessons have, I mean, you probably, you have already seen all these things. So what, what is it that, you know, people like me and, you know, all our listeners should uh, really uh, try and understand the current situation that we are dealing with? How do we take hope from that? Uh, uh, not really, but you must level, uh, think macro uh, level. Not micro. Hmm. Let us take this. Uh, what happened after sixties or after seventies? Uh, because at the end of the seventy, the emergency was there, right? Seventy-seven. Hmm. Okay. Um, was it? I still remember. Uh, there were people in the villages who had no food nor cloth, especially clothes. I used to see uh, small children running without clothes. Today, you don't see them in villages. Food is not the problem. But still, but still, injustice is there. Not only still small injustice, big injustice is there. The um, capitalists like Ambani's and other Adani's, they're robbing people and making money. Even after robbing people and making money, uh, the situation is not the same as it was during 60s or 70s, which uh, 
drove the people into desperate uh, acts it's not it's not like that mm. but yes injustice is there you have the fight against injustice is also there is that it for instance uh, we have people like uh, what's his name uh, um, it must be transparent he said uh, the chief justice uh, for supreme court selection of secret uh, that nv ramana's case it was uh, dealt with uh, clandestine manner right mm. behind the screen behind the screen mm. it must be transparent he said uh, what's his name liar it must be transparent but bhushan prashant bhushan prashant bhushan people like prashant bhushan are there mm. um i still think that uh, aam aadmi party is doing something good mm. uh, i think uh, organizations like mvf are doing something good what is mvf mamudi pundi venkatrenga foundation mm. that that is something good so there is scope for doing things mm. and the doors are open for that mm. if modi declares emergency he cannot sustain it mm. today today he cannot sustain it because it's not the same india as it was then Uh, at that time, uh, Indira Gandhi not only declared emergency; she, she declared something else. She started a war against uh, the erstwhile uh, ruling classes, Nijalinga Pass and uh, the so-called syndicate, twenty twenty point program, uh, land reforms. Those are not small things. Hmm. The, the, those happened at the same time. as the revolution um, uh, laxerite movement as the total revolution it is from the below that is from above hmm um, we still i still think that uh, uh, those i was in prison during her uh, regime good like uh, uh, nationalizing the banks and uh, abolishing the privy purses and initiating starting the process of land reforms because we don't he, we don't see thousand you know, feudal lords with thousands of acres we, they were there mm. when i started my life in karimnagar district and in uh, hyderabad district some narayan reddy had thousand thousand acres mm. chakapalli bhagwant rao had acres some thousand acres the, the, those Feudal lords are not there now. They are either uh, they have gone to the uh, towns and become capitalists, or uh, vanished. Hmm. They don't. They, I don't think they are. They have vanished. They have become capitalists. It's good. Feudal, feudal from feudalism to capitalism is good. Hmm. Now what? We have to go go through capitalism and uh, work for uh, people's uh, state. For that. the democratic arena is the only thing um underground organization complete underground organization clandestine things conspiratorial methods mm. we have already tried when we tried they were good mm. yeah we, we, when we because there were the new things we were trying it first time now we have tried them and we we, look, we see the efficacy of them if we still cling on them what do, what does it mean it doesn't uh, uh, mean good i believe mm. they can be there such things should not be closed those those, those people should not be condemned but open activity must grow by the same uh, elements that led the revolution and the sincere ga i don't know how to express it the, the same sincere element must now do this Mm. Work openly. I'm not talking about NGOs. This NGOs is a different thing. Yeah. Mm. Work, work, work with the people. Right. All right. You you will face the same difficulties of uh, <laughs> uh, shelterlessness, foodlessness, etc. The organizers didn't have 
when i was an organizer i did have a pant of my own or shirt of my own i didn't know where i will be eating next time right there, there were uh, but still i bore with it because i loved it loved working for the people the same thing can be done now in the open not be, be, not being other right right like i guess what what you're saying in short is the fight for injustice should continue using the democratic process out in the open using all the democratic channels that we have yes yeah that's what i want to say great yeah. as well, a writer i'm still working for it right right <laughs> great yeah. well thanks a lot uh, hrk for your time it was a wonderful conversation and uh, you know thank you for uh sharing those uh you know moments you know or personal moments also uh okay. so it was a wonderful uh conversation thank you and thank you thanks uh, uh, suresh for making me talk <laughs> and <laughs> because nostalgia gives some happiness right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. thank you all right thank you